there are three announced challengers to front runner Hillary Clinton. The only question is, does anybody know who they are? Martin O'Malley. Martin O'Malley. Um, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. O'Malley, who is the governor of Maryland. Former. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so there's one. There's one. <laughs> That was it. <laughs> the governor of Maryland, I'd say. Former Governor O'Malley? O'Malley. Presidency is not a crown to be passed back and forth by you between two royal families. Elizabeth Warren and um, Bernie Sanders. Are you sure about Warren? I'm not positive. Senator Bernie Sanders. Very good. And uh, Senator O'Malley from Maryland. Democratic challengers. Oh. Can you name any? Not really. I, no. I like the Republicans. <laughs> you like the Republicans? You can, there's many, many to choose from so far. Uh, uh, yeah, like, like Ted said at the end, there are about 25 of those. So let's get right to the OTR roundtable with Democrat Mary Ann Marsh this morning and Republican Jenny Buckingham. Thank you guys for joining us. So what about Lincoln Chafee and uh, Martin O'Malley? Any chance whatsoever, Jenny? I mean, who's not running for president, first of all? Let's <laughs> raise your hand. On your I know, side, I maybe. On your side, maybe. Hey, for Hillary Clinton, the more the merrier, the, the, and the crazier the merrier. <laughs> these, these folks are making her look like a moderate, which is what she wants. Chafee, O'Malley, any chance whatsoever here? I mean, running on the metric system will get you nowhere. You won't even become governor of Rhode Island again. Um, <laughs> O'Malley, different. I mean, he looks to his right, he sees Hillary Clinton. He now looks to his left and sees Bernie Sanders. His whole game plan was to run to the left of Hillary Clinton. He has no shot now. He's getting squeezed. I want to talk about the Secretary of State, John Kerry. He's recovering from surgery. Marianne, how badly do you think this will damage his, his ability to participate in talks with Iran and, frankly, the rest of the world? Getting this deal done was a Herculean effort under the best of circumstances. Under these circumstances, it's all the more difficult. And being there personally makes a big right. difference given the relationships he's forged. If he can get back to being there in person, he's got as good a shot as he did before the break. But if it doesn't work out, which it may not anyways, right. um, I hope people don't look at this and blame this as part of the reason that would be wrong and unfortunate. So in, in today's society, you can, you can communicate instantly anyway, live on camera, but that's not as much as sitting next to someone and having dinner or whatever. Especially given the way John Kerry's done diplomacy. He's worked very very hard to really build personal relationships with all the people he, he deals with, especially in this particular negotiation with the Iranians. Yeah, Ginny, having the secretary here in Massachusetts is probably the, the, the place he doesn't want to be, you know, as much as he loves the base thing. Well, well, two things. First of all, the Boston Globe editorial last week calling him the spandex warrior was the best headline ever. <laughs> Secondly, I suspect maybe Prime Minister Netanyahu maybe did something to his tire. I mean, well, for some Tom people, it's not, the worst, the tire, it's so. not the worst <laughs> thing if this doesn't go through in many people's books. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. She launched another, political grenade, launched another political grenade at President Obama this past week um, by publicly rebuking his SEC chair for her weak, leader, for her weak leadership. With two openings on the commission needing uh, Senate approval soon, does this signal a permanent line of demarcation between Warren and President Obama at this point, Ginny? I think it does. It was a really toughly worded letter, and it was as much directed at President Obama as it was at the chairman of the SEC. I think there's a thin line between opportunism and political smarts, and she's, I think, crossing that line. How big of a problem is this going to be for President Obama? Look, but look, uh, when it comes to economic fairness, Elizabeth Warren is unafraid and unabashed. And the fact is, she's going to do everything she can on these topics to shape the very end of the Obama presidency and the presidency of that, the person who comes next. That's what she's focused on, and she's going to be successful. Is this going to be a major problem for the president, though? On these issues, it's going to be probably his biggest challenge. Harder than getting the votes together is, a, is showing how Elizabeth Warren can affect those votes that he's trying to get. You both heard, we all heard Richard Davey this morning of Boston 2024 here. On, uh, both of you, just off the top, <laughs> if, you, if you were awarding a medal for his, for his answering of the questions this morning, would it be gold, silver, or bronze? Ginny? He, he did an excellent job, but I wore this necklace on purpose. <laughs> the Olympic rings and they're yeah. gold, you know. Um, it, these are two rings short, yeah. and the Olympic Committee continues to be two rings short on transparency. <laughs> and, and they need to do better. I think he knows that. And we'll see when their new plan comes out if they can do better. Marianne? It's about more than a plan, okay? Instead of going on the listening tour, they need to go on the apology tour first, mm -hmm. then the listening tour. Mm -hmm. Then they need to make a set of promises they actually keep. Now, whether they have the time to get all that done and win this, I don't mm -hmm. know. But boy, it is hard to see how they're going to be successful now. I mean, 
trust is the hardest thing to earn, the easiest thing to lose. It is so hard to win it back. I don't think they can. They seem like salmon swimming upstream, no? Well, rip the band-aid off, okay? And this is 2.0. At this point, you it, it's beyond 2.0. Right. You need to blow the whole thing up. And first, go around and apologize to yeah. everybody. And again, I don't think it's a surprise. Some of these venue locations have to do with winning a statewide ballot. Maybe not necessarily the best place to do things, but that's what we're talking about. Now, this is straight politics. It'll be interesting to see whether it's tinkering around the edges or whether it's yeah. really just, you know, doing everything. And from what he says, it doesn't sound like it's going to be a massive blow up of the plane. Well, tinkering's plan. not going to get the job done. It's just not. Let's well, switch over to uh, the T. New emails released from former MBTA GM Beverly Scott. She described Keolis' leadership as MIA, and she pointed to many of the problems the public suspected. Was it a mistake to let her go, and was it a mistake to hire Keolis? Marianne. Look. Your job, Bev Scott's job, was to prevent problems and fix them. She didn't do either. By the time she pointed them out, everybody knew. Fire Keolis. They're not getting better with the weather. Fire them now. Get rid of them. Rebid the contract. And let them take everybody to court. Good luck with that. They are terrible. They should have been gone long ago. Is she right about that? Look, Boston loves its scapegoats, and she was just the latest one. The problems at the T are longstanding. The governor is trying to fix them. That is the answer. Not looking backwards or forwards. It's fix the problem that's in front of us. Is Keolis the problem? Keolis is, was victim, I think, to an unprecedented winter storm season. And they are paying for that. And let's see how they do with new management. They're, they're doing badly now. And the weather is like in the 80s, 70s, 90s, 40s, whatever date is. They're still bad. <laughs> <laughs> this past week, uh, Mayor Walsh, Governor Baker, Speaker DeLeo, and Senate President Stan Rosenberg were asked about pot smoking. And the last time they smoked pot. Let's take a listen. When I was in my late 20s, believe it or not, I was late to the game, and only a couple of times. How about you, Mr. President? <laughs> I went to college in the 60s. <laughs> That's your answer? <laughs> That's my answer. How about you, Governor? I went to college in the 70s. It would be more like an early 20s comment than a late 20s one. <laughs> So Rosenberg won't say where he stands on legalizing marijuana, but he seems to be leaning in that direction, saying that he supports the idea, but the others are firmly against it. Do you think this is going to get on the ballot, Jenny? I do, and unfortunately, I think it would probably pass. I give Mayor Walsh enormous credit for willing to take this on. It's against the popular tide, um, but I think he's right. Is she right about that, Marianne? They get the signatures. The presidential year probably passes, but it can't. Massachusetts can't handle medical marijuana. It shouldn't do legalization. Is marijuana an issue in 2015 at all? Yes or no? I mean, it, it really? Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. actually, I think, I think a lot of people support medical marijuana yeah. and don't support legalization. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm a mother of two teenagers. <laughs> I don't want that message sent to them. We continue on the record. Stay with us.